17. The fortification of the fluids of the earth. 25th January, 1847. We have seen in the last communication how the juices are driven up through the interior of the earth, through the middle or solid earth. The mechanism is, as you will have easily seen from the description, basically extremely simple, but at the same time completely functional in its arrangement. The juices, however, which are carried up by this simple mechanism, would soon lose their original force, which is substantially added to their essence, especially with the distance, which not infrequently amounts to several hundred miles. In order to remedy this easily achievable problem, help had to come from another side by means of an extremely ingenious mechanism as follows. In the direction from north to south go countless, extremely fine mineral threads, which from north to south are mostly purely iron-bearing, and vice versa, those from south to north are platinum-bearing and sometimes also copper-bearing. These threads are, as already noted, extremely fine, so much so that the thread of a spider divided into parts would yield 10,000 such threads, which is certainly a very fine piece of work. These threads do not run evenly in straight lines, but very curled, approximately like the comb of a saw, and at the same time in many other windings, especially in the areas where they brush against the veins and channels rising from the interior of the earth. But this is also necessary for it is precisely at these points that these conductive threads must have their most active effect. These threads are not small tubes, but all different kinds of crystals, which are connected to each other like links of a chain. Their position is as if you were to place several triangular pyramids on top of each other in such a way that the top is exactly in the middle of the lower surface of the following pyramid. And the iron-containing ones are directed so that the tops face north and the platinum and copper-containing ones have the tops turned south. If you imagine this, you will have a correct picture of how these conductors are constructed. This line must therefore be mechanically ordered, because any other smooth line, such as a wire, would lose the electromagnetic fluid at a length of not infrequently 3,000 miles. The fact that smooth conductors lose their fluidity more and more with time can be assumed by those who are more experienced in this kind of manipulation from the fact that an electric spark conducted over a long distance no longer has the same powerful effect as in the vicinity of a conductor which first absorbs the electromagnetic fluid ether from a rubbed glass plate or from several copper and zinc plates 
dipped in hydrochloric or sulfuric acid. This pyramidal line alone would not be completely useful for a conductor running several thousand miles. If it did not continue in its own tube, which is formed by such a mass through which no electric spark penetrates. From this you can already see a little how elaborately this mechanism is woven. But little would be gained if these threads let the electromagnetic substance change back and forth. Therefore, at certain points, especially in the area of the ascending channels, there must be collecting chambers in which this substance accumulates. And when such a chamber is fully charged, it then acts on the liquid in the channel, giving it new power again. This is the purpose of these countless collecting chambers, which are sometimes larger and sometimes smaller, and are also sometimes negative and sometimes positive, so that if the substance in a rising liquid would be too violently heated by the positive electricity, the negative then takes the surplus into itself again and immediately transforms it into its own kind. Or said in German, English the translator, what the positive electricity heats up too much, the negative cools down again. Another purpose of these now known conduction threads is to set in motion the many driving pumps in the canals. Which driving pumps support the original driving force of the Earth's heart pulse? Without this support, this first force would necessarily soon have to slacken, if it had to deal with many trillions of centners at each impact which weight the juices ejected with each pulse certainly have, even on the smallest scale. By the above-mentioned pressure pumps, which are specially installed in the channels, the pulse force of the Earth's heart is helped, so much that it only has to struggle with a significantly lower weight. But to explain the mechanism of such a pressure pump to you in more detail would be a futile effort, and you would never get a perfect insight into the matter. Even with the clearest possible presentation, because it is a too complicated work, into which only a spirit, but never the eye of the flesh, can contemplatively penetrate. Therefore, such elaborate preparations will be much easier and more comprehensible in the spiritual representation of the Earth's body than now in the merely material one. In this way, we have become acquainted with a very elaborate mechanism in this Middle Earth. For the full knowledge of this part of the Earth's body, only a few things are still missing. Then we will be finished with it. This little consists of the so-called return or reabsorption vessels, through which, as in the animal body, the blood through the veins, the excess juices, which are not yet completely prepared for the nourishment of the Earth, return to its heart, in order to obtain new strength and reinforcement there. These receding channels are also provided with stop valves, which open only when the heart of the earth contracts. If it expands again, 
these valves close and do not allow the refluxing juices to continue. But these valves do not close as precisely as those in the ascending vessels, being not so necessary. Firstly, these return channels are narrower throughout than the ascending ones, so that the column of liquid contained in them does not hold so much weight. Secondly, the liquid contained in them is also much more inert than that in the ascending channels. And thirdly, these above-mentioned valves only have to ensure that these channels are not completely interrupted during ejection, but only blocked, which mechanical device you can also find in the veins of animal bodies, as well as in the tubes of wood known to you, where, however, the return vessels occur between the outer bark and the wood. That is now all that was left to say about our Middle Earth in the material mechanical respect. And since we are finished in this way with this subject, we will take ourselves next time to the third or outer Earth 